Hey everybody, this will be my first time trying to shoot the Needle Galaxy NGC 4565 since I've started using filters. Last year when I imaged the Needle Galaxy, I was pretty happy with the results given that I really wasn't able to make out much the prior year when imaging galaxies with just an icon, as the icon was unmodified and I am shooting in border late skies. As a matter of fact, I was so happy with my results, especially from 4565 last year, that I had some fun with the images. So join me as I go through some of the images I was able to capture and some of the processing steps I've taken. My name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. The main purpose of this channel is to show what you can do with a 6-inch SCT, specifically mounted on a wedge. And to that end, uh, I guess this being my third galaxy season, I'm doing a bit of a progression of what you can expect to image with different types of technology. So in my first year of astrophotography, I was using a Nikon camera. In my second year, last year, I was using a cooled ASI 294 MC Pro dedicated astrophotography camera, but I didn't have any filters. Now last summer, I ended up getting a filter tray and a number of different filters, including the SV Bonny UV IR cut filter. And that's the one I'm using this year. I've had a lot of success with this filter and I was excited to see what it would do with the Needle Galaxy. So a couple of weeks ago, I got set up and I was able to image over the course of two nights uh, where I got some pretty good data. I wasn't really quite sure what to expect as I had seen some others shoot this galaxy with 8-inch telescopes with some amazing results. I wasn't expecting that level of detail, but I wasn't quite sure where I would end up. I'm picking up my session from last night, uh, and here is where my tracking, my guiding died and dithering as uh, the scope hit the house. Or rather, the house came into the field of view. The scope didn't actually hit the house. That would have been horrendous. So uh, here's a live view uh, from my guide scope. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to quickly double check my focus. So I'm going to pick a brighter star that I can focus against. Uh, let's see. How about... Well, we could go with Denebola or Regulus. Now let's go with Regulus. All right, there's the scope slewing. Is my position changing? All right, we've got Regulus more or less centered. Um, and my guide scope is really off. I need to adjust this thing so it points more or less into the center. Doesn't matter too much to me right now. All right, there's Regulus. Let's uh, use the focus aid. So I'll bring up the focus aid, and that's too bright right now. Let's tone it down a bit. I'm going to go back to cam. Let's retake this image at one second. All right, it's a bit better. Let's use the autofocus aid and let it determine our focus. So currently the focus is set to 30,684, and let's run that and see what happens. All right, it's telling me that the focus for tonight is 30,653. Having a hard time believing that, but uh, let's take an image and we'll find out. So I'm going to go back to cam. Let's reset the cam to 480 gain and pick that up to three seconds. And now let's go to, let's go find our target. So last night I was shooting NGC 4.5. Uh, 654565 five, Needle Galaxy, I believe that's it. Let's go back to the Needle Galaxy. I'll go to Gear, Point Craft, and take the current scope position, solve that. So there's a good place to start. I failed because I'm using this image that was shot at 240 gain. So let's reshoot this image. 
at 480 gain in three seconds, and then we'll redo solve. And it failed. See, I'm not liking this look. These stars do not look right at all. I'm going to go back to last night's focus. 30,800, uh, 684. Now let's retake that image. Let's see the difference. That looks so much better. Yeah. APT's focus aid just has not been working for me consistently. Uh, I've been using my batch and off mask to double check the results, and it's very hit or miss. It worked pretty well last night. I was kind of hoping that it would work tonight as well, but it uh, looks like not. So I'm going to trust that I'm pretty close on focus from yesterday. That looks very good to me. And uh, let's close that by accident. Let's. Uh, Take the current scope position, solve for it. There we are. Let's synchronize the scope position. And now let's find NGC 4565, which I was shooting last night. So NGC 4565. Will it find it? No, it will not, because I need a space between... Uh, okay, what's going on here? Insert. I don't want inserts. I want to do NGC 565. Got some gremlins in the works tonight, I think. There it is, the Needle Galaxy. And let's go to. My mount should be moving. There it is. There it goes. <clears throat> and it's going all the way over to Colma Berenice, or Colma Berenices. And yeah, I took a time lapse of that with my camera mounted on the back of my telescope. Came out kind of cool. So now we're solving for the position of NGC 4565. Not picking up those stars against this background. I think we may have to synchronize on a different, brighter object for a moment. Okay, so now it knows where it is. I'm going to bump this up to 10 seconds, maybe. All right, and now let's slew to four, five, six, five. <clears throat> Slewing back. view. I'm going to close my diagnostics here. I don't need those up anymore. Look at that. That's the galaxy right there. Wow. And I got it on the first shot. And success. Or is it going to try to move? No, I think it's, it's done. It's done done. All right, let's switch to live view, make sure we're not drifting. Okay, we don't seem to be drifting. Let's go back here and let's turn on guiding. We're using multi-star guiding here, here we go. 
And let's clear the graph. I've got my guiding set to uh, 400 frames history. All right, there it is. Yeah, let's clear that. Get a fresh graph going for tonight. Whoa, where's my RA going? Come back, RA. Okay. All right, we'll let that uh, guide away over here. While we go back into APT and close out of point craft. And let's get ourselves a imaging plan going. So I'm gonna select, at 10 p.m. right now, I'm gonna select an eight hour plan. So here's eight hours and I wanna use 240 gain. There it is. Let's edit this. So 180 exposures, I'm doing three minute uh, images. 240 gain and I'm getting 160 of those. And that is eight hours. I'm gonna check one more thing. Yeah, dithering is on. Yeah, I'll leave it on. All right, and start. Here we go. So I thought this would be an interesting fact. Uh, here's a list of galaxies that I had imaged over the last little while. And NGC 4565 happens to be the dimmest galaxy I have imaged to date with a magnitude of 10.42. Uh, it's a galaxy that's a fair size across, but it's... Uh, um, not very wide so it's uh tall wide what's what dimensions would you use on this it's it's very wide but not very tall uh which is why it's called the needle galaxy um <clears throat> but uh yeah it's a, it's a fairly dim galaxy so capturing it in borderlate skies is a little bit of a challenge uh, I was able to image it over the course of two nights, and out of that uh, came 206 frames at 130, or rather 180 seconds of frames, so that's three minutes, uh, for a total of 10 hours and 18 minutes of integration time. And uh, in terms of processing, I first ran all of the uh, frames through Deep Sky Stacker. I weeded out those that... Um, I uh, had stretched stars that had some other artifacts that uh, had bright backgrounds, uh, didn't quite work out. And out of those, or, or out of all of those frames is, and that's where I ended up with the 206 frames. So my, my starting point was, was a little bit higher. So processing wise, first I went through Cyril and in Cyril, uh, I did some basic stretching. So these are the files that I imported into GIMP after Cyril. Uh, what I did is a couple of different variations, one with stars, one without. So this is just a basic uh, stretch in Cyril uh, with uh, some of the background removed with the green noise removed. Now with this image, I, I did a second pass of the same image with star removal, which uh, led to this image here. Uh, and then I save this as a stars layer. So here's a stars layer now uh, with the stars from the first image extracted. And then from here, I took the image of just the galaxy and I performed various levels of stretches. So here is a, a stretch that really emphasizes the dark dust lanes uh, here's another one that emphasizes the 
uh, the actual core of the galaxy, but oversaturates the image. Uh, here's one that uh, tones that down a little bit to bring out some of the detail. And uh, here's one that, that really takes the contrast in, and so on and so forth. And what I ended up with is this combination that I ended up using as my final image. So I had, uh, let's see, this image. So I'm going to shut down all these other ones. Okay, so there's this one as a base with this one added. And then this one to enhance uh, some of the, uh, the coloring for this uh, galaxy season, especially in some of my latest captures, what I've tried to do is stick to just uh, curve adjustments. So uh, different levels of curves to bring out different levels of details, but holistically for the entire image and then blending everything back in so that what you end up with is really just the original image that's been curve adjusted to bring out the best of the various details and colors. So that's what, what we have here. So uh, these three layers, uh, between the three of them, are the galaxy itself. And then I've got the stars layer that I add over top of that to bring the stars back in. And these are the stars from the original image that I had extracted at the beginning so that I wouldn't stretch the stars as I was adjusting the, the curves and uh, for the galaxy itself. So here we are. Uh, we've got uh, the galaxy here. I'm, I'm really happy with the coloring, uh, the blue that actually came through, and the detail in the dust lane. Now, it's certainly not the level of detail that you would get with a larger scope. I've seen some beautiful images done with 8-inch uh, SCTs. Um, but uh, you know, compared to what I had the previous year, I'm really happy with... Uh, with how this is progressing. So there we are. Uh, this is uh, NGC 4565 with a six inch Nexstar 6SE Celestron telescope, now imaged with a SV Bonny UV IR cut filter over the course of 10 hours. Thanks for watching and uh, clear skies.